Welcome to my frozen shithole of a garage office. I feed and train my pet spiders and centipedes out here. They make a great natural, organic wife repellent. It's how I keep her out without hurting her feelings, you know? <coughs> Eric, back off. Eric, leave her alone. Atta boy. Stay away from her. Eric. <coughs> no, Eric, back off. Ivanka, no teeth, come on. They're good bugs, really, and I need to keep them healthy because they keep my wife out so I can watch my movies. Unfortunately, it's colder than Hades' testicles in here. It's a cinder block building on a slab, so it's a nightmare to keep M-class in the winter. Even with the furnace blasting this concrete wall, it's just a giant heat sucker. For reference, the air temp in here is 67. I'm burning propane at a hedonistic rate just to have it sap right out again by a giant heat sink of a wall. I want to show you how I built this insulated, trendy, reclaimed wood plank accent wall for a fraction of the price and made this place more friendly for me and my guard arthropods. Guard thropods? I'm using 2x4s as furring strips, bolted right into the concrete wall using 3 16 by 2 and 3 quarter inch Tapcon screws. Pressure treated saves you the hassle of needing a vapor barrier. This Harbor Freight laser distance measurer makes this next step cake. It's proven just as accurate as any tape measure. Just gonna mark out my foam board. Now you can cut the thin stuff with a box cutter, but I'm using inch and a half thick boards to perfectly match the thickness of my 2x4s. So this jigsaw is my choice, but a circ saw works too. Bully. So the other nice thing about the jigsaw is you can carve out small details, you know, pipes, outlets, trim, whatever you have. Now to do the rest of the cold wall. This should go really quick. Oh, make me a liar. Gotta use the Neanderthal method on the skinny ones. One thing I like about the circular saw method is you can cut it just short of full penetration and then you can just snap it. Oh, so satisfying. Jigsaw for the win here. Before any junior home inspectors hassle me for having heater tape up against the foam, this heater tape hasn't worked since the first Obama administration. All the foam boards are in and now for the walls. I got these from Lowe's and yep, it's flooring. Flooring on the walls, you madman. Not only is it a third the price of reclaimed wood, it's also waterproof and significantly less of a fire hazard. The previous owner wired this bitch up himself, so to cover it all with dried pine planks is just daring God to burn it down. Uh-uh, we ain't gonna be in no fire, not the day. Antique barn wood. If it's good enough for your trendy farmhouse kitchen floor, it's good enough for this. Cuts just like wood. An assortment of nails here to see what looks and works best to secure these planks to the studs behind them. Hard as a coffin nail. Pilot holes. Pilot holes might be in order. Whoops, masonry on the brain. Starting with a box nail, or framing nail. Look, I'm not a carpenter. Let's just call it a regular nail. <clears throat> it does come out if you yank, but I think four nails per plank should be fine since the boards interlock as well. Let's try a finishing nail. Yeah, I like that much better. <clears throat> Hold is about the same, too. This is what fake antique barn wood looks like. It's a lot cheaper than the real stuff. Looks and feels like real wood. And you shouldn't have a bunch of weird gaps since it locks together nice and tight. I'm just going to cut the first piece on every row some arbitrary length to make it look somewhat less uniform. A little more authentic. You can see I cut the tongue off one side, but I didn't cut it off the bottom because I'm just going to put molding on the floor anyway. These planks are hefty, and I want the load stacked vertically, so the 2x4s and nails' only job is to keep them from falling over. Two nails into each stud on both sides, and I have a nice sturdy board. The 
tongue and groove locking system on these is super tight. It's watertight and the foam boards are moisture rated and the studs are pressure treated so I shouldn't have any moisture issues and it's designed for heavy foot traffic so no worries about cosmetic damage. You can use standard woodworking tools to make room for valves, outlets, or whatever. Make sure you cut these with the surface facing up, otherwise you end up with a lot of chipping. It's like Legos. So satisfying. This stuff is hard. She ain't cutting as fast towards the end. Getting a little warm too. And this drill used to be sharper. Add a saw blade and some drill bits to your budget. Still, powering through nicely. But the saw and the drill bit are not the only tools taking a little bit of heat. Ask me if I know how to frame a window. I don't. Wood filler and paint makes me the carpenter I ain't. Me, I think I put the molding on backwards. Anyway, that's job done. A trendy reclaimed wood looking wall that's rock solid, a fraction the price, not nearly as combustible, and most importantly, it's toasty as friggin' here for my spiders and centipedes. I've got some lighting issues and some trim work to do, but my ADD's kicking in, so I think I'll stop here and skip the last yard as per usual. Thanks for watching.